of people we just finished with um annie james and then we have another entertainer in the house now i'm sure the video you watched actually has told you who we're talking about we're talking about no other person but dj jimmy good to have you <laughs> nice to be here welcome you jimmy doing? jack well I'm well good. thank you yeah. I'm really excited to be here. We're Aww. excited to have you. I'm to have sitting you with too. two beautiful ladies. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So reports have it that you actually started your career as a rapper. Yes. How is that? Not, not really. I was more, most like an aspiring artist okay. that never really got into it, you know. I started out as a rapper, yeah. And I made a lot of demo tapes at that time. None ever got anywhere. A lot of my lyrics eventually made some other rappers' album. Wow. You, know, yeah. you want to tell us who? Um, I mean, it would be, if you remember Julian and Pretty. Yeah. Yeah. And you remember that Monica, Monica album. Oh. There's yeah. some tracks on that album that my line, my verses were on. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what made you go into disc jerky and actually? Um, love for music and... Um, Influence. Um, I started out as a rap, like I said, and I was into breakdancing as well. You know, just generally uh, hip hop guy that just love all elements of hip hop. So you started out rapping, and then you're breakdancing, and then eventually it got to a point where between the guys that I do the rap stuff with and the guys that I breakdance with, everybody already know my stunts. So I became the guy changing records for them. Mm. You know, like while they do it, I'm the one changing records, and I got more comfortable with that. Oh. Plus, my brothers were already DJs before then, so, oh. yeah. But yeah, so reports have it that you're like the pioneer, you're, you're one of the pioneers of DJing in I Nigeria. Wouldn't, I wouldn't accept that. I think that's too heavy for me to take. Why? Um, I mean, with due respect, there were DJs before me, and to say you're a pioneer, man. Okay, one of okay. the pioneers. I, I would say, no, one of the key players, no doubt, but pioneer, no. There were DJs in the 70s, yeah. There were DJs in the early 80s. I didn't even start DJing actively until the late 80s. But everybody says know. that you revolutionized. Maybe DJ. that's maybe that's a better word, you okay. know, but pioneer, uh, let me respect my All right, name. so seeing that <laughs> you are not stepping into the title of pioneer that lots of people have given to mm. you, who would you say were the DJs that you were looking up to at the time that you started? I started DJing, DJing when I was a teenager. I wasn't going to parties. I wasn't seeing DJs. The closest I got to seeing DJs were my brothers. I wasn't of age to go to clubs. I wasn't, you know, so I didn't really look up to be honest with you like i would say these were the djs that i looked up to was mostly my brothers and then eventually when my brothers realized i was very serious with it they also got a guy who was a bit you know more advanced than they were his name is kachi he's a politician now he's in okay. abuja so he now gave me so you could say my brothers gave me that primary education he gave me like the secondary ed education in DJing, okay. you know, and then from there I just moved on. And then when I started DJing, I met a lot of DJs. Okay. And so then I started looking up to different people for different reasons. Oh. So I, I'm like, okay, then I know this DJ and he does this kind of thing, or oh, I like that, maybe I, you know, so I look up to, you know, such people. Who were some of these people? Like? Um, Grandmaster Lee, without a doubt, first, first off. Um, there was um, Color Buyer as well. Um, some of the ones I never met, these were the ones I met, some I never met, but I was studying what they were doing as well, you know, from a distance, you know, so, um, a lot of them, for different reasons. Okay, so I knew you grew up in Obalindi. Yes, I did. I was born there, I, gr I grew up, you know, I, pretty much I'm an, well, I'm, I'm an Obalindi boy. Yeah, I know, you, you've yeah. always said that, but <laughs> did, did that area or neighborhood of Lagos mm -hmm. have an influence in your career? Heavily, yeah. How? Um, first of all, for, uh, in terms of even loving showbiz or just lifestyle of loving entertainment, it's the environment. You know? So, Abandon is that place where there are parties all over the place, there are shops, music shops playing, playing music. Even some people are not even in the music business, but they just put speakers out, play loud music. And then, I, like I said, I used to break dance. So, I, sometimes I just dance on the street and people gather. You know, that's like a common you know, seeing in Obaindi at the time, some of my boys like that. So I was more popular for that even at the beginning. You know, like we close from school, we don't get home between, you know, the time you close and the time is, I mean, dinner time. Wow. You know what I mean, yeah. 
All right, so let's look at your journey towards you know, having your own shows, you know, mm. from Roadblock to Jimmy's Jump Off. Mm. You know, how did, it, how did you go through these processes? Okay, so I think Roadblock was the first thing that I started as a DJ in terms of let me create a platform for all the people like myself that were frustrated out of music because there was no platform at that time to showcase what you could do, you know. So I started doing that event when I had a little fame and popularity in my own neighborhood, you know. So, you know, we just blocked the road, you know, put stages there, I mean, stage there, speakers and all that, and then get people from, with talent all over. And a lot of artists were discovered from there. I mean, Junior and Pretty were signed from there. Um, Daddy Shoki came out of there. Wow. You know, um, a lot of them, you know, Rough Rocket and Raw came out of there. Therefore, clan came out of there. You know, a lot of them came out wow. of there. You know, some even, I mean, like El Cream, who eventually people got to know more from, from um, Nollywood. They all came off that platform because I was doing it every year. Daddy Fresh came out of there, you know. So, um, and then that moved from being a street event to being a venue event. And we started doing water parks. So it was an annual water parks again, and then some more people came off that. People like LD, the Don, I mean, um, Plantation Boys, you know, um, a lot of people. Yeah, I remember. And then I remember moved on to, going to water parks. Yes. And oh, actually, you did. Yes, as oh, a kid, real? my dad used to bring us there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. To watch acts and all of that. Yeah. While swimming too. Yeah, and then that eventually developed into what probably we'll call Jimmy's Jump Off today, you know. Pretty much still the same, not the same format, a more you know advanced format. But I mean, it's the whole like, sense of creating platform and letting people leverage on it and move on. I guess we now see why you are a revolutionary in the industry. Oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's a bigger word. <laughs> but, yeah, I wasn't going to take. But and, well, you are, well, at least you can't no, understand. Your name. You would understand where that yeah, comes from. Because you. there are many Come people on. who would not write their entertainment stories without yeah. mentioning your name because mm. they would say, "Oh, I started with yeah. DJ Jimmy Jet." Now let's look at the industry now, the industry of disc jockeying in Nigeria. Mm. I've seen that there's a, a crop of young people, you know, mm -hmm. coming into the industry. There's a lot of them coming now. Yeah. Would you say that? the DJing industry, there's an overflow. Is it saturated? Is no, there still space no, for no. more? Do you know how many parties happening in night or on a weekend? I hear that about 5,000 parties yeah, on the average so, in Lagos. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's enough space for everyone. Outside the parties, the clubs. Okay. Outside the clubs, radio. Outside radio, tours, artists, you know. You know, so there are a whole lot of DJs needed. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I mean, while I'm playing a party in the Korea or VI, some... DJs traveling with an artist as a road DJ. Some DJs on the radio. You understand? Some of the DJs are in the nightclubs, and the nightclubs are all over the place. You know, so I mean, you need a whole lot of DJs. You know, so I'm I'm happy that right now parents or people, you know, regard and respect that profession. When I got into it. You don't go home to tell your parents you want to be a DJ. When you went home to tell yours, what did well, they say? Well, mine, I'm from a very, very liberal home. I came out of a binding. My parents were music-loving people. I, from, from stories, I had my dad, when he was young, was the music man in the neighborhood. You know, so mm. he couldn't have stopped me. And then I was influenced by my brothers. So my case was a case of what my family made me. Okay. You know, so now, if you want to say, why are you a DJ, hold them responsible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... Pretty much, you know, so, I mean, I, so I like the, the process where someone like me growing up or starting out as a DJ, I couldn't visit my friends at home. I couldn't, I mean, girls that were hanging around me can't be around me when their aunties or their moms are around because I'm a DJ. So now parents are calling you to say my daughter wants to be a DJ, same daughter that they won't let hang with you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm happy you know, in terms of where DJing is right now. The narrative but has changed. Still, but of course, it's still not where it should be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I remember that, um, first of all, there was a time you stayed in Lawrence. Mm. Of course, we both know I that. I've moved. On. I've lived <laughs> everywhere in Lagos. <laughs> I mean, I'm Lagos itself. And, and I remember talking to Spino some days ago, mm. and he actually gave credit to you a lot. He said oh, you gave us. him a lot of training, and he said his first paid job was from you. And you gave me 500 naira. You know, most times when people say that, I mean, Two Face will tell me the first time he got paid was me. Aww. 
And I don't, I don't have any means of doing that because mm -hmm. truth, I probably just feel like, oh, this guy needs, needs to go home or he needs to get something. Or, you know, and they probably just needed to get on that stage, which is enough for them. But I still always feel like I've made some money from this. Let me, you know, let me yeah. just spread it around, you know. So a lot of people will tell you I paid them first. Meanwhile, I thought, I've always thought that they get paid for everything. So that means every other person before me was just ripping them off. Wow. wow. Oh, just. Uh, <laughs> okay. If, if you could make some changes, you know, yeah. you mentioned earlier that the DJing industry is not where it, it's not where it used to be, but it's not where it should be. So mm. if you could effect some changes, what would be some of the changes you'd like to the see? The changes are already happening, you know, but it's a process, you know. I mean, it's the way people see the profession around here, not... What, no, not your university, you know. Yeah. So around here, the way people perceive the profession needs to get better. And it's getting better, you know, without a doubt. But still, you know, people are planning event. You know, they think the venue, if the venue is of 10 million, they pay. If the caterer says bring um, 5 million for food, they pay. If um, the MC says, you know, it's 2 million for the show, they pay. If the, if the artist says for special appearance, it is five million they pay. When <laughs> it's the DJ, DJ then, not me. Okay. I mean, I, most times when I speak, these things, I, I don't get those because I get, you know, I get what's, what's, what's right for me, you know. So, okay. But I also know this problem exists with a lot of All younger DJs. DJs. You know, where they say, we really don't have a budget for that. But, I mean, if you just, it's just not just to come and play. That needs to change. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a whole lot of investment to be a DJ. The equipment ain't cheap. Yeah. The skills, you know, it takes time to acquire that. And the equipment are in millions, and then you still continue to update music like every day. You know, understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and people, so you come to a party as an average DJ, your value in terms of what you're putting on ground is well over 10 million now. I mean, especially if you go as far as the sound and everything, microphones and all that, then it's well over that, and people are not ready to pay you well. I've heard rumors that yeah. in the industry there are cabals. Is this true? There's no cabal. I don't know of, of any. There's no cabal. Which cabal? Who and who is the cabal? I'm like, you know, let me tell you. Okay, so I could tell you, like, okay, maybe some people don't get along with some people, but it doesn't mean cabal. Everybody, the fact that we're all lawyers doesn't mean all lawyers are friends. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. You know, you could be very close to her and then you guys work together a lot. It doesn't mean it's a cabal. It's just, these are my own people. You understand what I'm saying? But I don't think there's any cabal, you yeah. know. Yeah. Okay, I, I think also it's, it's important that, you know, we get to know the DJ, the, the DJ Jimmy Jats that is not DJing. So when you're not DJing, what are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm a complete introvert. I don't like going out. I don't want to be where people are. You know, I like to be by myself. If I wasn't a DJ, my life would be boring. No doubt. <laughs> what would you be doing if you weren't a DJ? I don't know. Never had time to think of it. <laughs> I've been DJ since I was 16. Okay. So the, and I wasn't, at 16, it wasn't like I even had it figured out. I just found myself DJ. Wow. So that's really all you know. Okay, so tell that's us about Jimmy, the family man. Um, okay, so I'm married. I've been married 22 years. In this year, wow. be 23 years. Yeah. You know, wow, so I'm a that's veteran amazing. In that, yeah. I think you're an authority in the marriage, I am. <laughs> in the marriage industry. <laughs> I am, I in this am. day and age, you that's know, something yeah. really commendable. I've been married 23 years to the same woman. You know, I have two kids. I'm happy you said the same woman. Yeah, I mean, this age and time, I think people marry three, I mean, three years and it looks like a lifetime. Mm. You know, so, you know, I'm proud to say that. Congratulations. So how, how do you cope with your marital life? And family life and you being a public figure um just being yourself and being true to yourself i'm not a star in my house nobody knows jimmy jack in my house hmm. um I'm, my wife calls me jay and she pulls my head Can't we, uh, <laughs> my daughters when it dawns on them that i'm actually jimmy like, no <laughs> you know so that's the reality of it you know nobody carries himself i don't carry myself like that they don't carry themselves like that mm. You know, we're real to each other. But I see a lot of homes where somebody gets to the house and still thinks, oh, um, you know I'm a star now. That's a problem you know, right. when, you, when you take that home. Mm. So.
Thank you so much for sharing your journey and your story with us. It's been a delight. 23 years married to the same woman with two children, has an amazing career going for him. We've joined DJ Jimmy Jat on his journey and it's been such a delight. Thank you for joining us today. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.